Hello and welcome. Now that we have discussed the cell cycle in the Neoplasia part 3, uh, now we will continuing. Now we will discuss that cyclin dependent kinases and cyclins along with both these, any increase in function of these will lead to malignancy, whereas any reduction in func function of the inhibitors that is either P14, P16, P21, or P53 or the cell cycle regulator at the G1S point that is the retinoblastoma will lead to malignancy. So to precisely understand there is this table we can understand that CDK4 and D cyclin that causes the phosphorylation of retinoblastoma that we have already discussed in normal state retinoblastoma is bound to E2F it is bound in condition of hypophosphorylation and in this state it is preventing the cell from progression from G1 to S phase. Now when the cyclin dependent kinase 4 with CDK uh, sorry cyclin dependent kinase 4 with cyclin D will cause phosphorylation of retinoblastoma E2F will become free and it will cause transition of G1 to S phase. Okay, so when there will be increased function of CDK4 and cyclin D, the and inhibitors will not be able to control it and there will be increased phosphorylation of retinoblastoma and increased availability of E2F, the cell regulation will stop and there will be increased G1S transition and more uh, cell cycle progression. And then the cell cycle inhibitors that is P21, P27. As we all know, whenever there is damage, their DNA repair genes activate P53 that activates P21 and causes the inhibition. Then there is another that is TGF beta. That is a growth suppressor that inhibits the that sorry stimulates the p21 that causes inhibition then there is another family that is the ink4 arf family that has the component that is p16 and p14 p16 and p14 are very specific that is the p16 inhibits the retinoblastoma and p14 inhibits the p53 sorry it increases the p53 levels how it does uh, increases the p53 levels it does it by inhibiting the mdm2 levels activity this mdm2 is the similar that we will study in uh, liposarcoma then there is retinoblastoma that we have already studied and i have explained you how it is uh, in, in in its hypophosphorylated state it controls the progression of cell cycle and when it becomes phosphorylated and it leaves e2f that leads to transition of g1s then there is p53 p53 is a tumor suppressor that is that will be discussed in details these both will be discussed in details in the further on but here it is very important as it is Whenever there is DNA repair or whenever there is, we have to stop the cell cycle, the P53 regulates the stopping of cell cycle by inducing the P21 that causes inhibition of cyclins and cyclin dependent kinase. It also induces apoptosis by upregulating the BACs. The whenever there is a damage to DNA, it has stopped the proliferation by the mechanism of P21 and then it will induce the apoptosis by the BACs protein. So this is how uh, it is and then we can see some loss of function examples are there and then gain of function. When there is gain of function in cyclin D and CDK function, it is seen that amplification uh, of CDK4 has been associated with melanomas, sarcomas and glioblastomas. CDK4 inhibitors are now advanced and it been used in breast cancers. So it is also important to see that cyclin D is it of three types D1, D2 and D3 but uh, these are used in, uh, functionally interchangeable and these are often dysregulated by acquired mutations. And the mutations there is also a cyclin E that has also been seen but it is less as compared to cyclin D mutations. Then loss of function mutation in um, the uh, loss of function mutation in genes that inhibit. So we know that whenever the inhibitors will lead, uh, will have loss of function, then also there will be malignancies. So we know that germline mutations of P16s are there. We have seen that cyclin D and CDK4 are most are not uh, genetic. 
and they are not uh, germline but they are acquired whereas the loss of function and inhibitors some of them can be germline that is germline mutations of p16 are seen so whenever there be a p16 germline mutation are present in 25% of melanoma prone people then somatically acquired mutations and inactivation of p53 are also very common more so common than germline up to 75% patients of pancreatic carcinoma in 40 to 70% in glioblastoma in 50% in esophageal and 20 to 70% in ALL and in 20% in non small cell carcinoma soft tissue sarcoma and bladder carcinoma further two more important tumor suppressor gene that is retinoblastoma and tp53 have been also associated both encodes protein that inhibits the g1s transition so this ends the tumor sub, uh, sorry the proto oncogene part now we will start uh, from the uh, next part of the neoplasia we will start the tumor suppressor genes thank you